I think we are actually ready. Um, I think we are. Hello out there. My name is Xavier D. Johnson, and I am here to show you about one of my favorite tools, Burp Suite. Uh, to get started, we're going to focus on the Community Edition, even though Port Swigger actually has three different versions of Burp Suite out. Um, an enterprise version, professional version, and community version. Uh, the, difference, the real difference between professional and community are the web vulnerability scanner. Um, the web vulnerability scanner is set up to automatically look for SQL injections, uh, cross-site scripting. Um, it'll do some automated scanning as well. It looks for basically the OWASP top 10. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a good to have, but uh, for a lot of beginners and a lot of people getting into uh, security, you know, doing things like web go and doing things like dev vulnerable web application, um, you, you could probably get away with just using the community version. So what we're going to do is go ahead and get the community version downloaded and installed. Um, so I'm running Windows right now, so you can go ahead and get the Windows version, although they have a jar and they also have a Linux and Mac OS versions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the Windows version. Click Save File. And while that's downloading, I'm actually going to go and uh, here I want to go get that. Give me one moment. All right. Now we actually have the file. It's been downloaded. And I've already installed this, but I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it. Install over it, so to speak. So when you double click on the installation wizard, this is what will happen. It will run. You'll get a UAC, which means your entire screen will blank out. And you will have to click yes to allow Burp Suite to make changes. And since I am actually over you know, installing over something that already exists it's going to ask me do i want to update the existing application i'm going to go ahead and say yes it's going to re-extract those files over i'm going to let it do its thing And then it's going to finish. Um, give me one second here. We're going to go ahead and click finished. And then we're going to get this thing started. So we're going to turn on Burp Suite. One of the real differences here for Burp Suite Community versus Burp Suite Professional is the fact that you can only use temporary projects. You can't save a project. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use temporary project and we're going to use burp defaults and start burp. Burp by default stands up a proxy server on your local host at port 8080. So if you click the proxy tab, which is the third tab, and you go over to options, which is the last tab, you'll see an interface running on port 8080. So what I like to do and this is just a little, for one, I like to go over here into intercept and turn intercept off because sometimes you just get confused and you're like, why is this thing not working? Go over to intercept, turn it off. I know it sounds cool. It's like, ooh, intercept, but no. Um, go over here, download a tool called Foxy Proxy to your browser. Um, they, I think this is for every browser. I like to use Mozilla Firefox. Foxy proxy will then allow you to um, add a proxy. I'm going to make a burp suite uh, community. We're going to go ahead and say 127.0.0.1 uh, because .0 .0 there's no place like localhost. Um, we're going to go 8080 for the port because that's what's standard. We're going to go ahead and save that. Now, we have a proxy that we can switch on and off right here in the browser immediately. It's amazing. So now uh, you want to go over to something like Google, 
click refresh, Google works, right? Awesome. So now we want to start to run all of our traffic through Burp Suite Community. So now we have the green Burp. We refresh. Oh, software is preventing Firefox from safely connecting to the site. It looks like the Port Swigger CA, and the CA stands for Certificate Authority, is blocking. Okay, what is this about? So you can go over to Events, and you can see there's no way to easily go forward. You have to go back. Um, oh, look at that. Did we just find a way to get around? No, we didn't. <laughs> Live. I thought we had a zero day, but we don't. Um, so you're probably thinking, okay, what, what do we do now? Well, inside of options, you'll see import export CA certificate, right? So there's a certificate here that we can use. Uh, so I'll actually go and grab the URI for that. And I believe the URL is just HTTP burp. Yep. And then what you're going to want to do is grab this CA certificate, save it. And then you want to have that in a location that you can readily retrieve. So I'll go and get that cert right here. And what you're going to want to do is add that cert to your list of trusted certificate authorities. You want to go over here to options and then you want to go to privacy and security, scroll all the way down, go to view certificates, and then you want to click import and inside of import. Then you want to locate where you downloaded your certificate. Go ahead and import that certificate to trust websites and email go ahead and click OK click OK again and now you should be able to do things like go to Google and if you go and inspect the certificate you'll see that it's verified by port swigger and if we actually go look at our tool we'll see that we indeed are getting data from all over the place, including HTTPS hosts. So this is a quick and dirty way to be able to get Burp installed on your machine and become the man in the middle, which we all know is our favorite place to be. I hope this is helpful for you. Maybe in our next videos, we'll go into how to use Burp on an engagement. Um, but for now, go out, dig, go do some Googling. Wait until I come back. Let's see if my next video is boring for you. But until then, have fun, stay safe, and don't get in any kind of legal trouble using Burp on anybody's site that you are not permitted to use on. That is a very direct and clear warning. Be nice. Play nice. Be safe. Peace.